Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. We invite you to join us at 1 Oakley Avenue in North Providence, Rhode Island. This podcast is presented to you by The Way Ministries, supported by listeners like you. For donations, live videos, podcasts, and more, please visit www.thewayministriesri.org. Thank you and have a great day. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. So glad you could join me today to get a portion of God's Word. Today we're going to begin with day 236, August 23rd, Ezekiel 33-36. to Watchmen on the Wall Overview The fall of Jerusalem brings a significant shift in the focus of the prophet's message. Up to this point, Ezekiel has declared coming calamity for Jerusalem citizens. Ezekiel 1.32 but now he looks ahead to the day of coming comfort for Babylon's captives, Ezekiel 33 to 48. God is preparing a time of consolation, a time when he will regather, restore, and renew his covenant people. Though the nation presently experiences groaning, there will come a day of glory when even the mountains and hills, rivers and valleys will declare the greatness of the God of Israel. Chapter 33, Watchmen on the Wall, Duty. Chapter 34, Shepherds and Sheep, Denunciation. Chapter 35, Edom's Doom, Calamity. Chapter 36, Israel's Delight, Cleansing. Insight, A Piece in the Puzzle of Blessing, Ezekiel 35, 14. Edom was already included in the decrees of destruction in chapters 25 to 32. So why does it come up again in 35, 14? Because the demise of Edom is part of the future blessing of Judah the major theme of chapters 33 to 36. See also Lamentations 4, 21 to 22. Insight. Where there's a will, there's a promise. Ezekiel 36, 1 to 38. At least 21 times in chapter 36, God declares, I will do something on behalf of his covenant people. See how many of the 21 you can discover for yourself. Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel as Israel's watchman. Once again, A message came to me from the Lord, Son of Man. Give your people this message. When I bring an army against the country, the people of that land choose one of their own to be a watchman. When the watchman sees the enemy coming, he sounds the alarm to warn the people. Then if those who hear the alarm refuse to take action, it is their own fault that they die. They heard the alarm but ignored it. So the responsibility is theirs. If they had listened to the warning, they could have saved their lives. But if the watchman sees the enemy coming and doesn't sound the alarm to warn the people, he is responsible for their captivity. They will die in their sins. But I will hold the watchman responsible for their debts. Now, son of man, I am making you a watchman for the people of Israel. Therefore, listen to what I say and warn them for me. If I announce that some wicked people are sure to die and you fail to tell them to change their ways, then they will die in their sins and I will hold you responsible for their deaths. But if you warn them to repent, and they don't repent, they will die in their sins, but you will have saved yourself. The watchman's message. Son of man, give the people of Israel this message. You are saying, our sins are heavy upon us. We are wasting away. How can we survive? As surely as I live, says the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of wicked people. I only want them to turn from their wicked ways, so they can live. Turn. Turn from your wickedness, O people of Israel. Why should you die? Son of man, give your people this message. The righteous behavior of righteous people will not save them if they turn to sin, nor will the wicked behavior of wicked people destroy them if they repent and turn from their sins. When I tell righteous people that they will live, but then they sin, expecting their past righteousness to save them, then none of their righteous acts will be remembered. I will destroy them for their sins. And suppose I tell some wicked people that they will surely die, but then they turn from their sins and do what is just and right. For instance, they might give back a debt as security, return what they have stolen, and obey my life-giving laws, no longer doing what is evil. If they do this, then they will surely live and not die. None of their past sins will be brought up again, for they have done what is just and right, and they will surely live. 
your people are saying, the Lord isn't doing what's right. But it is they who are not doing what is right. For again I say, when righteous people turn away from their righteous behavior and turn to evil, they will die. But if wicked people turn from their wickedness and do what is just and right, they will live. O people of Israel, you are saying, the Lord isn't doing what is right. But I judge each of you according to your deeds. Explanation of Jerusalem's fall. On January 8th, during the twelfth year of our captivity, a survivor from Jerusalem came to me and said, The city has fallen. The previous evening, the Lord had taken hold of me and given me back my voice, so I was able to speak when this man arrived the next morning. Then this message came to me from the Lord, Son of Man. The scattered remnants of Israel, living among the ruined cities, keep saying, Abraham was only one man, yet he gained possession of the entire land. We are many. Surely the land has been given to us as a possession. So tell these people, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. You eat meat with blood in it. You worship idols and you murder the innocent. Do you really think the land should be yours? Murderers, idolaters, adulterers, should the land belong to you? Say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. As surely as I live, those living in the ruins will die by the sword, and I will send wild animals to eat those living in the open fields. Those hiding in the forts and caves will die of disease. I will completely destroy the land and demolish her pride. Her arrogant power will come to an end. The mountains of Israel will be so desolate that no one will even travel through them. When I have completely destroyed the land because of their detestable sins, then they will know that I am the Lord, Son of Man. Your people talk about you in their houses and whisper about you at the doors. They say to each other, come on, let's go hear the prophet tell us what the Lord is saying. So my people come pretending to be sincere and sit before you. They listen to your words, but they have no intention of doing what you say. Their mouths are full of lustful words and their hearts seek only after money. You are very entertaining to them, like someone who sings love songs with a beautiful voice or plays fine music on an instrument. They hear what you say, but they don't act on it. But when all these terrible things happen to them, as they certainly will, then they will know a prophet has been among them. Ezekiel 34. The shepherds of Israel. Then this message came to me from the Lord, son of man. Prophesy against the shepherds, the leaders of Israel. Give them this message from the sovereign Lord. What sorrow awaits you shepherds, who feed yourselves instead of your flocks. Shouldn't shepherds feed their sheep? You drink the milk, wear the wool, and butcher the best animals, but you let your flock starve. You have not taken care of the weak. You have not tended the sick or bound up the injured. You have not gone looking for those who have wandered away and are lost. Instead, you have ruled them with harshness and cruelty. So my sheep have been scattered without a shepherd, and they are easy prey for any wild animal. They have wandered through all the mountains and all the hills across the face of the earth, yet no one has gone to search for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As surely as I live, says the sovereign Lord, you abandoned my flock and left them to be attacked by every wild animal. And though you were my shepherds, you didn't search for my sheep when they were lost. You took care of yourselves and left the sheep to starve. Therefore, you shepherds, Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I now consider these shepherds my enemies, and I will hold them responsible for what has happened to my flock. I will take away their right to feed the flock, and I will stop them from feeding themselves. I will rescue my flock from their mouths. The sheep will no longer be their prey. The good shepherd. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself will search and find my sheep. I will be like a shepherd looking for his scattered flock. I will find my sheep and rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on that dark and cloudy day. I will bring them back home to their own land of Israel from among the peoples and nations. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel and by the rivers and in all the places where people live. Yes, I will give them good pasture land on the high hills of Israel. There they will lie down in pleasant places and feed in the lush pastures of the hills. I myself will tend my sheep and give them a place to lie down in peace, says the Sovereign Lord. I will search for my lost ones 
who strayed away, and I will bring them safely home again. I will bandage the injured and strengthen the weak, but I will destroy those who are fat and powerful. I will feed them, yes, feed them justice. And as for you, my flock, this is what the Sovereign Lord says to his people. I will judge between one animal of the flock and another, separating the sheep from the goats. Isn't it enough for you to keep the best of the pastures for yourselves? Must you also trample down the rest? Isn't it enough for you to drink clear water for yourselves? Must you also muddy the rest with your feet? Why must my flock eat what you have trampled down and drink water you have followed? Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will surely judge between the fat sheep and the scrawny sheep. For you fat sheep pushed and butted and crowded my sick and hungry flock until you scattered them to distant lands. So I will rescue my flock, and they will no longer be abused. I will judge between one animal of the flock and another, and I will set over them one shepherd, my servant David. He will feed them and be a shepherd to them. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be a prince among my people. I, the Lord, have spoken. The Lord's covenant of peace. I will make a covenant of peace with my people and drive away the dangerous animals from the land. Then they will be able to camp safely in the wildest places and sleep in the woods without fear. I will bless my people and their homes around my holy hill. And in the proper season, I will send the showers they need. There will be showers of blessing. The orchards and fields of my people will yield bumper crops, and everyone will live in safety. When I have broken their chains of slavery and rescued them from those who enslaved them, then they will know that I am the Lord. They will no longer be prey for the other nations, and wild animals will no longer devour them. They will live in safety, and no one will frighten them. And I will make their land famous for its crops, so my people will never again suffer from famines or the insults of foreign nations. And this way, they will know that I, the Lord their God, am with them. And they will know that they, the people of Israel, are my people, says the Sovereign Lord. You are my flock, the sheep of my pasture. You are my people, and I am your God. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. Ezekiel 35, a message for Edom. Again, a message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, turn and face Mount Seir and prophesy against its people. Give them this message from the Sovereign Lord. I am your enemy, O Mount Seir, and I will raise my fist against you to destroy you completely. I will demolish your cities and make you desolate. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Your eternal hatred for the people of Israel led you to butcher them when they were helpless, when I had already punished them for all their sins. As surely as I live, says the Sovereign Lord, since you show no distaste for blood, I will give you a bloodbath of your own. Your turn has come. I will make Mount Seir utterly desolate, killing off all who try to escape and any who return. I will fill your mountains with the dead. Your hills, your valleys, and your ravines will be filled with people slaughtered by the sword. I will make you desolate forever. Your cities will never be rebuilt. Then you will know that I am the Lord. For you said, the lands of Israel and Judah will be ours. We will take possession of them. What do we care that the Lord is there? Therefore, as surely as I live, says the Sovereign Lord, I will pay back your angry deeds with my own. I will punish you for all your acts of anger, envy, and hatred, and I will make myself known to Israel by what I do to you. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have heard every contemptuous word you spoke against the mountains of Israel. For you said, they are desolate. They have been given to us as food to eat. In saying that, you boasted proudly against me, and I have heard it all. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. The whole world will rejoice when I make you desolate. You rejoiced at the desolation of Israel's territory. Now I will rejoice at yours. You will be wiped out, you people of Mount Seir, and all who live in Edom. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel 36 Restoration for Israel Son of man, prophesy to Israel's mountains, 
give them this message. O mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Your enemies have taunted you, saying, Aha, now the ancient heights belong to us. Therefore, son of man, give the mountains of Israel this message from the sovereign Lord. Your enemies have attacked you from all directions, making you the property of many nations and the object of much mocking and slander. Therefore, O mountains of Israel, hear the word of the sovereign Lord. He speaks to the hills and mountains, ravines and valleys, and to ruined wastes and long deserted cities that have been destroyed and mocked by the surrounding nations. This is what the sovereign Lord says. My jealous anger burns against these nations, especially Edom, because they have shown utter contempt for me by gleefully taking my land for themselves as plunder. Therefore, prophesy to the hills and mountains, the ravines and valleys of Israel. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, I am furious that you have suffered shame before the surrounding nations. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I have taken a solemn oath that those nations will soon have their own shame to endure. But the mountains of Israel will produce heavy crops of fruit for my people, for they will be coming home again soon. See, I care about you, and I will pay attention to you. Your ground will be plowed, and your crops planted. I will greatly increase the population of Israel, and the ruined cities will be rebuilt and filled with people. I will increase not only the people, but also your animals. O mountains of Israel, I will bring people to live on you once again. I will make you even more prosperous than you were before. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I will cause my people to walk on you once again, and you will be their territory. You will never again rob them of their children. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. The other nations taunt you, saying Israel is a land that devours its own people and robs them of their children. But you will never again devour your people or rob them of their children, says the Sovereign Lord. I will not let you hear those other nations insult you, and you will no longer be mocked by them. You will not be a land that causes its nation to fall, says the Sovereign Lord. Then this further message came to me from the Lord, Son of Man. When the people of Israel were living in their own land, they defiled it by the evil way they lived. To me, their conduct was as unclean as a woman's menstrual cloth. They polluted the land with murder and the worship of idols. So I poured out my fury on them. I scattered them to many lands to punish them for the evil way they had lived. But when they were scattered among the nations, they brought shame on my holy name. For the nations said, These are the people of the Lord, but he couldn't keep them safe in his own land. Then I was concerned for my holy name, on which my people brought shame among the nations. Therefore, give the people of Israel this message from the sovereign Lord. I am bringing you back, but not because you deserve it. I am doing it to protect my holy name, on which you brought shame while you were scattered among the nations. I will show how holy my great name is, the name on which you brought shame among the nations. And when I reveal my holiness through you before their very eyes, says the Sovereign Lord, then the nations will know that I am the Lord. For I will gather you up from all the nations and bring you home again to your land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. Your filth will be washed away, and you will no longer worship idols. And I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart, and give you a tender, responsive heart. And I will put my spirit in you, so that you will follow my decrees, and be careful to obey my regulations. And you will live in Israel, the land I gave your ancestors long ago. You will be my people and I will be your God. I will cleanse you of your filthy behavior. I will give you good crops of grain, and I will send no more famines on the land. I will give you great harvests from your fruit trees and fields, and never again will the surrounding nations be able to scoff at your land for its famines. Then you will remember your past sins and despise yourselves for all the detestable things you did. But remember, says the Sovereign Lord, I am not doing this because you deserve it. 
O oh, my people of Israel, you should be utterly ashamed of all you have done. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. When I cleanse you from your sins, I will repopulate your cities, and the ruins will be rebuilt. The fields that used to lie empty and desolate in plain view of everyone will again be farmed. And when I bring you back, people will say, This former wasteland is now like the Garden of Eden. The abandoned and ruined cities now have strong walls and are filled with people. Then the surrounding nations that survive will know that I, the Lord, have rebuilt the ruins and replanted the wasteland. For I, the Lord, have spoken and I will do what I say. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I am ready to hear Israel's prayers and to increase their numbers like a flock. They will be as numerous as the sacred flocks that fill Jerusalem streets at the time of her festivals. The ruined cities will be crowded with people once more, and everyone will know that I am the Lord. My Daily Walk Can you think of a promise you made to someone during the past month and then failed to keep? Can you think of a promise someone made to you and then went back on? Can you think of a promise God made to you and then forgot about or failed to fulfill? There is a wonderful promise about promises stated in Numbers 23.19 and illustrated in Ezekiel 33.36. God is not a man, so he does not lie. God is not fickle of facilitating in keeping his word. When he states, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, you can stake your life on it every time. Are you ready to become a prospector for the promises of God? Then here are some nuggets of gold to get you started. Matthew 6:14, 7, 7 to 8, Luke 6, 38, John 14, 2 to 3, Philippians 1, 6, 4, 6 to 7, and 13, James 1, 12, 4, 7 to 8, and 5, 16. One thing you can give and still keep is your word. Ah, oh, that's so true. That's all for today, my friends. It was great reading along with you. Have a great day and God bless. And I will see you tomorrow, Lord willing. Peace.